Dear ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to this mystic uh, National Park of Collie and this inspiring room. I am the director of the European Forest Institute and it is a great honor to open this year's Forest and Photonics Conference. And I would like to, to start with a quote from Albert Einstein because, as you know, he won the Nobel Prize of Physics uh, by discovering that light is composed by discrete particles called photons. But the quote is not related to quantum physics, but I thought it could help us to make us reflect about the underlying name of our event. Albert Einstein said that we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we had when we created them. And in my view, forest and photonics together can trigger a new way of thinking as basis for transformational change. Transformational change that we urgently need if we want to address the unprecedented global environmental problems that we are facing. But why do we need especially transformational change nowadays? Well, after 100 years of relying on a fossil-based economy, it is clear that we have arrived to a tipping point. The world has become too big for our planet. And that should not have been a surprise because the Industrial Revolution resulted in a fundamental systemic change in our economic system from a thermodynamics point of view. Because it meant to move from an open economic system powered by the sun to a closed economic system powered by finite fossil resources which are internal to the system. And already 200 years ago, French physicist Sadi Carnot explained, by the way, he was the one formulating the second law of thermodynamics, and he explained what happened with free energy in a closed system. It results in entropy, disorder, and irreversibility. And this is what exactly has happened with our fossil-based economy after 100 years. It is true that our fossil-based economy has generated unprecedented economic growth as well as social and technological progress. But the fossil-based economy has as well resulted in the largest environmental externalities in human history. Well, we have basically changed the climate of our planet and we are crossing its resilience boundaries due to the loss of biodiversity and the degradation of our natural resources. So, having arrived to this tipping point, as Albert Einstein said, we need a new way of thinking a new way of thinking as basis for a new economic paradigm. Basically, we need a new economic paradigm where prosperity takes place within the renewable boundaries of our planet as powered by the sun. We need a new economic paradigm based on renewable energy, but also on renewable materials. And as you know, renewable materials are only possible based on renewable biological resources. And this is why the bioeconomy should also place, should play a central role in building the new economic paradigm. <coughs> However, we should also remember that biological resources are renewable, but they are not unlimited. And therefore, more than ever, their use and transformation needs to be intelligent, efficient, and above all, sustainable. And this is what the circular bioeconomy should be about. But in addition, in a context of a rapidly changing environment, we need to ensure as well that our biological resources are resilient to climate change. And this is why investing in biodiversity should be recognized as a top priority in developing a sustainable, long-term, resilient bioeconomy. And for these reasons, it is that in my view, the bioeconomy is much more than replacing fossil resources by biologically based resources. The bioeconomy is much more than the sum of the different bio-based sectors. In my view, above all, the bioeconomy offers us a great opportunity to address the past failure of our economy to value nature, to value our natural capital. So basically, the bioeconomy offers us a great possibility to build a new and synergistic relationship between economy and ecology. And in building this new economic paradigm based on this synergistic relationship between economy and ecology, of course, our forest, forestry, and forest-based solutions probably offer the greatest potential of it all. Why is that so? Well, first of all, because our forests are the main biological infrastructure in our planet. They are the largest terrestrial carbon sink 
and they are the main terrestrial source for oxygen, water, and biodiversity. So basically, our forests are crucial to maintain our global natural capital resilient to climate change. But it, they have another fundamental role. Our forests are also the main source of non-food, non-feed, renewable biological resources. Resources that with emerging technologies like photonics can be transformed now into a new range of bio-based solutions, into a new range of renewable materials that can replace and of course environmentally outperform fossil-based products from industrial sectors like plastics, textiles, construction, or chemicals. So it is quite clear, there is no doubt, about the great potential of forest, forestry, and forest-based solutions in addressing our urgent global environmental problems. But still we need to bring that potential to action. And this is where, in my opinion, photonics enter into the picture because photonics can be that great catalyzer to unlock the forestry potential. Why? I mentioned it before. The biological resources, including forest resources, are renewable, but they are not unlimited. And therefore, if we want to build an ambitious and sustainable bioeconomy, we need to ensure that their use and transformation is intelligent, efficient, and sustainable. And exactly that is what photonics can make that happen. Because with photonics technologies, first of all, we can improve our understanding of the functioning of our forest ecosystems under climate change in connection to questions like biodiversity, how to measure biodiversity. Second, with new photonics technologies, we can develop advanced tools to manage our forest resources much more precisely in a much more intelligent way. And finally, through photonics technology, we can process forest resources more efficiently and we can ensure their transformation into a new generation of sustainable materials. And we will see examples in all these areas during the next two days. But I, I would like to highlight that in, in my view, the use of photonics in forestry can put the necessary light to transform many of our environmental problems into new opportunities. Not only business and economic opportunities, but we have also an opportunity to enhance our natural capital through the application of photonics technologies. And I would like to finish with a quote from an economist, Brian Arthur, who is also an expert on, on innovation and complexity science, who says that humans, we, all will, we always put our deepest hope in technology, but still our deepest trust in nature. And forest and photonics together can connect both of them, technology and nature, so that we can trust our hopes for a better future. So thank you very much for allowing me to open this uh, interesting and inspiring conference and I am re really looking forward to hear all your interventions during today. Thank you very much.